Welcome to another episode of Platform. Today, we're going to be speaking to Philip Moore. Phil is one of my favorite skaters in America at the moment. He has had excellent sections in bars, uh, eight down, hit it wet, as well as loads of online edits, um, including his sick urethane pro wheel promo that came out. He was riding for USD for a while, but now he's on Rollerblade, and he's just been absolutely killing it in San Francisco, in the Bay Area. He's recently moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico, I believe. So I want to talk to him about that, find out what happened there, because I know he had a job that he was enjoying in San Francisco and he was living there with his wife. So find out what the latest is there. Um, I also understand he's got a new initiative in the works with Rollerblade, but I'm not too clear on the details exactly. So I want to talk to him about that as well. Find out if he's got any new sections in the works, find out what's happening with Rollerblade, what position he has, you know, team-wise, if things are going to develop in AM or Pro or what's going to happen. Find out his plans for the future. Find out if he's got anything new in Norks with sick urethane or if he's riding for anyone else that I don't know about. I don't think he's got any other sponsors. Phil's also really outspoken about uh, LGBT rights, which is really refreshing and rollerblading because there's not many people that have, you know, stepped up and done that in the past. And it's only been the last few years that we've really shown any kind of acceptance for that community. So I think he's kind of pioneering in that way and, you know, hopefully encouraging others to do the same. I would be interested to hear what his thoughts are on other, you know, pro skaters and former pro skaters who've come out and had some kind of interesting things to say about, that community and about race and racial tensions that are in America. I know he's also really political. So we're going to talk about the election and how he feels about Biden being elected, stuff like that. So if you're hoping for just a blading podcast, unfortunately, Phil is not the guest for you because he has a lot of interests, a lot of passions, and it's not just skate related. Before we delve into all that though, cue the music. Good afternoon. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Um, so we're having breakfast at 1.30 in the afternoon these days. Yeah, I uh, stayed up kind of late uh, last night and was going to go skiing this morning, but the snow is not that good. So I'm going to wait and maybe go later this week. So treat yourself to a little lion, that's what you're telling me. Yeah, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. All right. I just realized it's been um, what is it? a year and one month since we spoke last. <laughs> yeah, it's been a really long time. How have uh, you been? I've, I've been good. It kind of seems like you've had some uh, major lifestyle changes in that time because you're no longer living in Oakland. So oh. what's what's going on? How, how did you end up in Mexi- New Mexico? Yeah, New Mexico. Um, We're in Santa Fe right now. Um, Moved here to get our dog Oliver service dog trained so that he'd be like good to go international flights and like not have to get boarded on the other side. Service dog trained. What does that mean? Like uh, he's already an emotional support animal, but like service dog training so like he could fly on a plane and not have to be in the like undercarriage or whatever. And he could like go in stores with us and stuff and all that kind of shit. Right. Okay. He's not really learning anything that's like super difficult that he didn't already know, but yeah, just making sure we have the paperwork. So if we want to leave the country, he could come with us. I've seen other, like we don't do this over here. So I've always thought it was a bit weird, but I've seen like people like Chris Daffick and stuff like that with their dogs on flights or was it Billy or someone? And I'm like, how the hell, how do they manage that? Because yeah, I'm pretty sure we can't do that over here. Yeah, I think they had a service dog bus for uh, Steve when they were doing that. But uh, right. yeah, like he's so he'll be like officially that and he'll have the paperwork and everything to back it up. So that's the only reason you're in Santa Fe? 
essentially yeah like there's there's like two other places in um in america that do the paperwork for international flights or international service dog certification or whatever and uh so yeah it's here or i think the other place was in like maybe new hampshire or some place in new england or something where it's really cold and so i wanted to not be cold so we opted for here okay that's, Even though it's kind of cold sometimes, it's pretty cold. That seems so. like a lot of upheaval for something incredibly niche. That <laughs> is, is that going to come in handy? That, re- that regular? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, my partner's from Australia. So, like, we want to eventually probably go to Melbourne and live there for a bit. So, if we do that, we want to have him set up so he's good to go and we don't have to worry a bunch, like, on the day. And then it costs the same amount to board him there after the for the quarantine period um as it does for the certification so it's like certification or pay for boarding so certification right we don't know when we want to go so it's not like we have a set date but it'd be good to have the paperwork handy okay i think i follow um (laughs) but didn't so did your wife have to give up her job was she not working as a teacher and oh no they they um they're a therapist uh their pronouns are they but um, they uh, they can do therapy virtually, so it's they've been therapy, working right. more than ever. Actually, I remember that. Well. Okay, yeah, because you were working, you were doing like a kind of after school program. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I was working right. in an after school program, and uh, I was working with kids on the autism spectrum, and yeah, teaching kids to skate a little bit, and now I'm teaching little kids to ski instead. Do you know how to ski? <laughs> Good point. Um, yes, I can ski okay. Like the first time I went skiing, I went skiing with my partner and a couple of friends from Oakland and right. they had all skied before. So we went on like black runs and shit and it was like pretty scary for me. So like for me afterwards, I was like, oh shit, I feel like I was in a car crash, but I didn't fall down a bunch because like, I guess some of the skating stuff translates. Okay. But um, since then, I've skied only while working with children, pretty much. Yeah, I, I can't imagine there's too much skiing in the South. No, no, that, not that I know. I mean, like, I think there's some places in Alabama with fake snow, but nowhere real. Right. Don't you need a certification to teach kids how to ski? <laughs> no, no. Like, they do a little bit of training. <laughs> you just let anyone walk in off the street. Yeah, yeah, cool. Teach your, teach your kids. Yeah. Yeah, but like I think I think what, what could possibly go wrong? Is, like I have um like ten years of childcare stuff, and then right, yeah, the teaching kids to skate. So it's like it's sort of the same deals, and you're not really teaching them on anything like super steep. Like sometimes I end up taking kids up the quad where it's like a little bit more steep, but it's most of the time we're on like the flattest of the flat, and like it's very chill. So it's like they can't really do too much. Sometimes kids get wild though, and yeah, but none of the kids in my classes have gotten hurt or anything. So yeah, fair enough. Good. Well, my first concern would be their safety. My second concern is if you don't have that much experience in the slopes, what if you just <laughs> what if a kid after like a couple of lessons is just absolutely whooping your ass on this? And he's like, oh, well, like, he's like, come on, Philip, can't you do this? Come on, come that's on. the thing. It's like when you're teaching little kids, like you know, um, with skiing, like skating, balance is important. So um, smaller kids usually take to it quicker because they have a lower center of gravity, yeah. and so they can stay in the balanced position to maintain their posture or whatever and not like lose control so quickly so a lot of times with them it's like if they come with their older brother or older sister their older brother or older sister usually is freaked out and doesn't want to do it and so the little kid is like we're ready to go i want to go get on the chairlift and the older sister's like i'm scared so yeah or older brother generally yeah 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 because when you're below a certain age there's just stuff you don't comprehend like (laughs) break every bone in my body <laughs> that's the thing yeah it's like once you can realize that you're like oh actually this is real scary i don't yeah. this is yeah. a bike on the street this is a little bit more gnar yeah i went i'd never i'd never been in a ski slope before in my life and i went to switzerland mm-hmm. to visit some friends for new year and they just gave mm-hmm. me a snowboard but no one showed me how to use the snowboard <laughs> and like I took my skate helmet with me and I just looked like a total idiot. Um, <laughs> and then I went up with him a couple of times and I was like, yeah, I'm confident and just went up on my own. But I didn't 
I didn't remember what the color scheme was for the hills. Yeah. And to this day, I still don't know which hills I went down, but I know that at one point the snowboard fell off. And when I went to retrieve it, where it had stopped, I looked over the edge and there was just a drop. And I was like, <laughs> that, that no. could have been me because I didn't know how to stop the snow. The only way I knew how to stop the snowboard was to lean back and fall. Yeah. So, yeah. I could have easily went over the side of a mountain in Switzerland Jeez, and died. Dude. So yeah. Um, lesson learned. That's, um, uh, that's intense. Like I feel like the majority of the people I see falling and sitting on their butts are snowboarders because it does seem a lot harder to do than because it's less intuitive than two things where your feet would be. Yeah, I, I did it once, and every time yeah. since, I'm like, no, I'll, I'll do skis. The skis seems mm-hmm. at least that way you're facing in the direction you want to go as opposed to yeah. sideways. Like, no. Um, yeah. All right. That's pretty wild. So, what's what's the skating like in Santa Fe, New Mexico? Are there is there anyone to skate uh, with? I don't even, I don't even know anything sure. about the place. Like, is it is it big? Is it small? Is there a lot of people it's, there? It's like a small town. Um, it's not that big. Like, it's a tourism based city. So, okay. Generally, it would be more busy, but right now it's pretty slow because COVID. And uh, even though there's still like a bunch of people, like a lot of the kids that I teach at the ski place, they're from like Oklahoma or fucking Utah or Texas. There's a lot of Texas people. Um, because Texas is like right under us, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, the skating is is good in that there's spots to skate. It's bad in that there's not a lot of people to skate with. There was like two other people in the town that skate here, and they also snowboard, and that's their main thing. So they're both snowboard instructors. So since the snow has happened and the mountains open. They've kind of stopped skating pretty much. I haven't skated with them since, oof, I don't know, like maybe October or something like that. Right. But there's a guy that just recently moved to Angel Fire that's two hours away from here. So he comes down and skates every other weekend or trying to do it every weekend, trying to film some stuff. But yeah, there's skate parks that are pretty cool. One's like five minutes away. Uh, I try to go there in the morning before kids get there because no kids wear masks and it's pretty wild. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah, Angel it's, Fire it's is the coolest name of a town I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Angel yeah. Fire. Fuck off. That is not a real place. What? <laughs> um, that is that's wild. You don't. When I think of Mexico, I just do not think of snowing or snow sports. Yeah, I, that that just does not spring to mind at all. Well, New Mexico is pretty close to Colorado, so it's right, okay. pretty. We're I think connected to the Rockies. The mountains are. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not 100. Uh, so, if you've not got no one to skate with and film, does that mean you just drag your partner out and like, hey, put, can you point your can you point the phone not at really, me? Not really. <laughs> I need, like I they offer clip. to do it, but I feel really bad whenever they do. So I'm like, I will just try to film with my phone or whatever. Or like the one dude that lives in Angel Fire, uh, he comes down every weekend. And we, we've been filming some stuff for the past maybe three or four months. So yeah, hopefully we'll have some stuff done by spring. And then, yeah, otherwise it's just me solo. Pretty much I'll have like some kid at the skate park film something maybe if I... I feel really froggy. Right. So you're missing the boys yet, or do you phone them up and Cameron and oh, Cameron and that are like, they're like, Philip, I, I don't know any Philip. What? <laughs> and they're like, like, well, we, lot, we, like, we used to hang out, and they're like, nah, it's not ringing any bells. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm still in like the group chat for the JSF dudes, and that's pretty. It's a pretty nice connection to have. Um, so I stay up to date on what's going on out there and I'm pretty bummed because it looks like they found a bunch of new spots and they've built some new spots since I left. And I'm like, fuck, I would love to skate that ledge spot. That looks really, really chill. But, um, otherwise I'm just trying to like at the ski place, I'm signed up to get the vaccine. So I'm hoping to have that by spring and then maybe go back and visit those dudes and skate and film with the SG. And, uh, yeah, so it's been it's been kind of hard, honestly. Yeah, like I saw some of the Denver dudes, Ian Walker, um, Jimmy Coburn, um, Hunter Grimm, and Jeremy Spire came down like 
maybe September or something like that. And I remember, or, no, yeah, October. Yeah. I think it was I w- October. I watched Ian, uh, Ian Walker's, uh, oh God, Wax Toaster. And he was saying that he's working yeah. on a new project and he said that you, you were going to have stuff in it. Yeah. 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 We're trying to finish some stuff. Um, like we got a few pieces because they came down and stayed here and then stayed in Albuquerque for a bit. And so I drove down to Albuquerque for like two weekends and just skated with them as much as I could. It was really, really good to like, it felt weird as hell because like I hadn't been around people in so long. And like, I was still staying pretty far away and like keeping my mask on and shit. But it was like, damn, this is like what it's about. Like, I miss this. Like, but you know, hopefully soon I'll be able to do some more stuff like that. Were, yeah. were they masked up or were they were they not bothered? They were not it? masked, but yeah, we were well distant. And as far as I know, they're a pretty tight little bubble for sure. Because they because i know um spire's got kids and shit and i know he's yeah. taking it pretty serious so um yeah like we were all outside like the entire time and all like a lot we skated a lot of ditch spots in albuquerque so that's yeah. see that's what i think of when i think of mexico i think of like dry barren places that just have all these crazy banks that you can skate yeah it's so weird to me because, like, when we were there, at one point we were in this one ditch spot and uh, Jimmy got a crazy clip and the ditches were, like, 100 feet tall, easily. And you're just like, why is this here? Like For, for all the, for so all the rain that they don't get. <laughs> they need, like, they what need is somewhere to wash away the rain. <laughs> exactly. Scotland needs ditches. Scotland needs that. They'd be full of water constantly. Um, but yeah. <laughs> you guys need some ditches. We, we don't have any that. Oh, maybe we do have ditches and they're just so submerged underwater that we Ooh. can't see them. Maybe there's ditches everywhere and I've just been, we call them yeah, <laughs> locks and rivers. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah it's got to be there's got to be some interesting terrain to skate out there yeah it's pretty it's pretty wild like the architecture lends itself to some creativity for sure there's a lot of like weird banks on buildings and like the sides of housing and shit like that so yeah skated like a like a hotel spot the other day where it's just like the wall had like a weird bank that led up to another bank and but it was i don't know it's weird they're like um the stucco-y type vibes or it's adobe housing i think is the majority of it okay yeah. um is everything closed there or due to covid or is it <clears throat> is normal or what's going on things are fairly open for like outdoor seating and shit and when it's well i guess when it's not freezing cold because sometimes it's like really really cold here which sucks ass right but um uh for the most part like store grocery stores and stuff like that that's all open and like this ski place is open obviously uh i don't know it's it's fairly mixed but yeah still there's some places where it's like that should not probably be open right now but it is so what are you gonna do like the rates of covid and deaths have gone up like a bunch since we've gotten here so it's like this sucks we are at least gonna buckle down and keep doing the same safe shit not add to it because it's pretty funky yeah oh yeah we're in our third lockdown now in scotland so everything is yeah. closed apart from um yeah like supermarkets and places that you can get like takeaway food but even yeah. even cafes and stuff you can't if they can't serve you at their front door you're not allowed in so <laughs> um and they've not given a date for when they're going to ease the lockdown so yeah, they're but taking it. you guys have lower numbers though, right? Like it's kind of working for you. We have we have lower numbers in the set, but then we also have an absolutely tiny population size. Like Scotland, mm. less people live in Scotland than live in London. Damn. So that's helpful. It's it is, but it's still spreading, <laughs> and so yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just one of those things. God yeah. knows. Um, but yeah vaccines are starting to get introduced so they're hoping to have everyone vaccinated by the end of the summer i think the plan was what we've been told mm. the news so um you you've got to be excited oh actually let's not say excited you've got to be <laughs> more optimistic by the yeah. election results because i know that a, a massive part of your like lgbtq like campaigning is as a result of all the shit that trump pulled so now it is is it is it a hopeful thing that Biden's in instead? 
Well, it's like I <laughs> I do remember you saying he wasn't a, a, a great option, he was just a better option. I think that was, was yeah, it's like, like yeah. he's very much not even a better option. It's just like an option that's not as like verbally toxic and like um like audibly toxic for people to hear just like and see how much fucked up shit he's doing and saying versus a person that's going to keep doing fucked up shit but like under the guise of like well we're doing it with a diverse group of people so it's not as bad that we're still bombing all these people that are brown yeah well we're also having a brown the first brown lady is a vice president but then she's also a cop who put a bunch of black people in jail for weeks so and also like put a bunch of trans people in the wrong jails based on their genders quotation marks and because yeah she's a shitty person so yeah it's kind of it's kind of fucked uh but it's i guess yeah it's slightly better so mildly more optimistic in that it's like i feel like at least covid will be taken seriously so like maybe we could do more stuff eventually exactly i mean it, yeah, at least he's not like a climate change in that. Like it sounds like Biden's yeah. just reversed a ton of Trump's <laughs> policies already, which yeah. at least that's a step in the right direction. And at least he's not, well, hopefully not promoting hate speech. Um, yeah, yeah. That's that's a, a solid positive for sure. It's always a bonus when your president is not promoting <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the not you know criminalization of, of uh, brown correct, people. Yeah. Yes. It's 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 yeah. always that's always a a plus. Um, all right, okay. Uh, because it kind of seems like Rollerblading has got very politicized recently over the past, I want to say like, probably since the last time we spoke, actually, there was a lot of kind of gender issues going on then in Bladen, and now it seems as if it's turned into race issues that people are bringing up publicly and not bringing them up well. Or Yeah, no. Or, um, <sighs> How can you? I, I'm trying to like think of a really polite way to say it, not really <laughs> um, in an informed manner. Let's let's put it that way. Because <laughs> I watched the Jump Street podcast last week, mm. and it was all going relatively well until they asked him about his con. They asked Josh about his controversial comments, and then it <laughs> turned into a train wreck really quickly. Oh, really, <laughs> and he said some of the things that no white person should ever say in their <laughs> life if they want to not be accused of something. Um, it, yeah. When, when yeah, he said he didn't it's... believe white supremacy was a problem in America, I was like, do you not watch the news? Because they're marching on campuses chanting, <clears throat> you will not replace us. Black people are still being lynched in 2020. <clears throat> and black men and women are dying for misdemeanor crimes and sometimes no crimes at all from the comfort yeah. of their own homes. Like if you can be killed in your own home for not committing a crime, then it kind of defeats the purpose of stepping outside ever. Exactly. So it, it was kind of wild. Yeah. I, I know you've what you must have watched it. I, know I, I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched like clips that people reposted. I watched some clips that uh, the homie ESG, he like made a little edit of some of the stuff and was making fun of him on his Instagram story. Because I couldn't um, figure out what was more entertaining. The, watching watching Josh <laughs> really badly fumble the question or watching the comment section light up next yeah. to it. And it was all Bay Area people. It was They had all the questions, all the comments. <laughs> so I, I knew it must have got back to you somehow. Yeah, it's like, oh, man, I don't know. I can't. I'm supposed to talk to Bill like tomorrow because... Um, uh, we have a mutual friend, Ray Mendez, yep. uh, who from, who's also from New York. Everyone and knows Ray. So, and, and Lane Skating Legend. Yeah, he's like the best. But uh, yeah, so I'm supposed to talk to Bill tomorrow, kind of around that. And uh, so I, I don't know, I can't, I don't, I don't want to say too much, but like it, it I, I think the first, when Bill reached out about that, or like we started talking about that, it was... Um, I think I just said that a lot of my thoughts have already been said in a lot of people's posts. Like Gumby made a post that was like really yeah, succinct that, and yeah. to the point. And it's just kind of like, it's not safe and responsible to have someone come on your show and say that sort of stuff and not have any pushback at all. 
with the facts that could, you know, easily refute all of the statements that we, he made. Yeah. But um, it just kind of goes back to like, I think, and I think Bill was saying that he wanted to follow or like try to pivot away from that when people, when he started saying it, like people in the comments, he was saying, we're saying go on to something else. And so it's like, I get that he has to like, you know, adhere to what his audience wants to hear. But at the same time, to not question that is, is a little bit irresponsible. <laughs> it's just not a little bit irresponsible. It's very responsible. But yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to talk about that. So like, yeah, I'm not going to put Bill down for that or whatever. But yeah, I'll, like, yeah, I'm not going to, it's just, it's, it's kind of sad to see though, after last year, because 2020, I think was really illuminating in that way that it pointed out that a lot of people in rollerblading are those people that are like, I would vote for Trump. I do vote for Trump. I'm proud of what Trump does. I'm proud of what Trump says. I'm happy with what he does. And no, I don't think white supremacy is a problem, but yes, I am a proud boy. So it's like, I, yeah. I don't quite. It was, yeah. yeah, it was a weird one. Like I'm a massive fan of Jump Street, particularly Austin. Cause I've interviewed him a couple of times over the years. I think he's a really nice guy. And yeah, yeah I did reach out to him afterwards and just said i was really disappointed <laughs> with the way that was handled yeah. with all due respect i was like you basically allowed him to spread lies to thousands of viewers and they've got tens right. of thousands of followers and it's fine to ask him about it because if they didn't ask him about it everyone right. would have been pissed at them equally saying why didn't you bring it up but if he's going to say something like white supremacy is not a problem in america and you're not <laughs> going to challenge that in any way like they literally asked him one question he ranted for five minutes and then they just said right let's move on like, <laughs> as far as your viewers are concerned if you don't disagree with them that's the same as agreeing because if you yeah. don't say well wait a minute you know can you know you clarify some of the things you've just said if someone doesn't know austin or billy they have no reason to believe that he disagrees with josh and Austin was really polite and got back to me and sent me like a lengthy thing saying, look, I didn't want to talk about it. He's like, I want it to be a bleeding podcast. I don't want it to be about politics. And I was like, unfortunately, politics <laughs> does impact every aspect of life. Yeah, and that actually. includes bleeding. And unfortunately, you brought it up. So you can't bring up the topic, allow him to rant and promote lies and dangerous lies at like that, dangerous yeah. lies that impact people's lives and then not call him on it. And to, in fairness to Austin, he was like, yeah, you're right. He's like, I do think we could have handled it better. And I just think they were out of their depth. I don't think, I don't think they wanted to bring it up. And then when they did, I don't think they knew what to do in response. And that's, right. you know, they, neither of them have a journalistic background. So it's like... <laughs> you know, they do just want to chat about bleeding. And I think when it goes to something that extreme, I think they just, yeah, didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think they're entirely to blame for the situation. I think it was just something they I, were a little unprepared for. Yeah, that's for sure. It's like, yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's it, it like as it's like you said, it's very disappointing for sure. But at the same time, I'm like, I understand if they felt like they weren't capable of like combating that sort of rhetoric with logic and reason and facts, because there's plenty of facts that could be thrown at all that stuff. But I, th um, I think their fear was that if they did, it would turn into like a four hour long podcast where right. Josh just got more irate and more irate and said more <laughs> stuff and i think they were like well maybe if we just move on now it'll yeah. do damage limitation but, but yeah same face yeah 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 so yeah um i've been to talk to bill about that and like you know just yeah get some clarification and like just yeah try to sort of see where where they're at where we're at with that You've mentioned this before that you've got some kind of like initiative going on with Rollerblade, and that's what that's what you're wanting to promote on. Was is it Jump Street that you're wanting to do? Well, that or okay, so I don't you, weren't very, you weren't very clear on the details, so I was like, I just know that you had something yeah. going on with Rollerblade, but you didn't really. I don't think well, you told yeah, me. Yeah, so like I don't have a thing going on with Rollerblade, unfortunately. I mean, I do have a thing going on with Rollerblade in that like I ride for Rollerblade, but like. I don't have a thing going on for Rollerblade, and the, the thing I'm doing isn't associated with Rollerblade as of now. So, yeah. Um, I started a book club with Ray Mendez, J. 
Jeremy Baytal, Michaela, Tommy, and Kenan, I think, and Miles. Don't forget Miles. Can't forget Miles. Um, and so it's kind of like an anti racist, anti oppression book club. And it's just a place to kind of have some of the conversations around the sort of things that Josh Betty was talking about. And obviously, the, the, the irresponsibility of that sort of stuff being said, but also the opposite of what he said, you know, like the truth. So, like, getting to the bottom of those sorts of things. I love, and like I love how diplomatic you were there, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, trying to, like, um, have more open conversations about race and gender in rollerblading as obviously, like you said, as much as they might not want it to be a political podcast because it's a rollerblading podcast, rollerblading is inherently political because people rollerblade. So since people are involved, therefore politics is enter the, enter the chat. Um, so the rollerblading book club is called aware just kind of vaguely. And we're kind of workshopping the name there. And then we're going to, try to do after the first book is I'm done. Gonna, let me do cut you off for two movie. seconds. I need to go and plug in my battery. I totally forgot to oh. put my laptop with my battery because I'm an idiot. Give me two seconds. No worries. <laughs> that gives me time to chill. I'm on fire today. First, I thought it was Tuesday that we were doing this, and then I forget to plug in the the most obvious piece of equipment into the laptop. Um, so, yeah, tell me about the um, anti racist book club. Uh, yeah, so it's like we're going to meet bi monthly, and we're going to do an intro call probably at some point this week or hopefully this weekend. And because it's just going to be kind of hard as people all across America have different time zones and stuff so it's like trying to coordinate when the best time for that to be would but would be is uh so we're doing that and i guess after the first book is done and we've done the first couple of meetings then we're gonna pivot to doing a podcast that would kind of be a partner with the book club to kind of further the conversations and have guests on to talk about you know each of the topics and just kind of go deeper into them based on the perspective of that person that is on the show so like yeah trying to again just enter or point out the intersectionalities of like all these different ways that people are dealing with oppression from like all of us like not just people of color but like white people as well like it's it's happening to everyone so it's like that's why we should be out there talking about these things as opposed to ignoring them and pushing them to the side saying that's like a not rollerblading thing that's just rollerblading is like I can't not be black when I'm rolling when I take off my skates. Like I'm still black all the time, so yeah. it doesn't really matter. Like the police see me the same, people see me the same when I go in stores here in Santa Fe, where there's not a lot of black people. <laughs> people still see me as a black person very much, no matter what what I'm doing, like skating or not. So it's those sorts of things that we should be talking about, and I want to try my best to like amplify voices that are not being heard currently in rollerblading because there's a lot of people from a lot of different groups in our sport and we're not hearing from them. It's kind of been a pretty white centric vibe for the majority of time. So, yeah. So what's the, what, is there a like continuous goal or set of goals or end goals that you have for it? Like what, um, what, well, what would you like to achieve general, with it? Would, yeah, the idea in general would just be to like create a dialogue around topics that people generally would want to avoid because they find them to be fraught with like fear that they're going to offend someone or like whatever or that they don't have enough information about the topic but if we're starting from a base of like we're all learning at the same time like I feel like it's a it's a good place to create a more um the beginnings of a more equitable world for rollerbladers or more equitable community where it is actually inclusive as opposed to just being in name only inclusive where people of all different varieties would feel 
perfectly safe joining and coming to be a part of the skate crew or coming to a session and not being worried that they're going to hear something or see something that's like, oh, damn it, I didn't know that's what we're doing here. No, I have to hide a little part of myself inside and then keep that from these people because I can't feel as safe as I thought I could in this group. So, yeah, we just want to make it as as inclusive as possible, the, the entire community of rollerblading, as well as doing some like active outreach to try and create more, um, a more, what's the word, uh, to, to try to take the ideas of, instead of just doing charity where we just give people money, trying to put people in a position where they could do things for themselves so that if they wanted to do something in their place, like, Obviously, Dan and the Shinobi guys have been getting money through the community yeah. thing, and like they just got their first deal with that. And so those are really big things. And so we're working on trying to do some more things like that, where it puts those people in, like, even with that, it's it's very good and not to shame it at all. But it's like, here's, we're going to give you money. Like, instead, what can we do that can help them create something that would create income for them to build what they want to build, like the world they're trying to see in Nigeria? And I know... Dan is doing so much work. He's like such a giant inspiration to me and like obviously lots of rollerbladers, but he's doing so much work out there trying to figure out what the community is that's already there and like how he can build on that to create a more like accessible way for people to see rollerblading as an option for them and as an outlet. Yeah. So yeah, like we does we, seem yeah, like we've got, got, yeah. They've got a small the, but like strong group there. Yeah. So as is it looks, yeah promising that's what i was going to ask how so you mentioned the people that are involved but i guess the obvious question is how are you going to try and expand it so that it has more of a positive influence like throughout the entire blading community rather than just the people involved with it from the outset well that's the thing it's like i ideally lots and lots of people would sign up and would be like oh yeah i want to be down for the book club and that would be great. But like for now, I think there's maybe 55 or 56 members in the book club on the Facebook group. And then a couple other people that are not in, on Facebook that are also going to be a part of it. Um, so I think it's one of those things where it starts small and it starts with like individuals. Cause it's like, if you are like, it's the same as like people seeing what happened with Josh Petty on the jump street podcast and then deciding to not yeah. sit quietly and say nothing but instead to say something about it and point out the obvious flaws in his statements and the irresponsibility or yeah, the irresponsibility of having him be able to say those things with no pushback at all, like with no accountability for the statements. So it's like, I think just the idea that accountability is being pointed out and is asked is being asked for by rollerbladers is a step in the right direction. So it's like, the more of that we can see on an individual level, the more it spreads out into the wider rollerblading community. So, yeah, it's like, I can't, I'm not, I don't think there's like a silver bullet. That's like, if I get John Julio to sign up for the book club, everyone will do it. Then, I mean, I'm going to probably reach out to John Julio, but I haven't done that yet. But uh, yeah, like it's, I don't think it'll be as popular as the new them skates, but I hope that it will be, you know, a thing that is helpful for some people. And if it helps just the people that are in the group, make it, if it helps them to make uh, conversations a little bit easier when they're trying to talk to people about these topics or they have a situation occur in their presence or that they see like with their friends, like to be able to talk about those things more openly and edu like, like with the actual information in their mind, you know, like, after they've been educated by reading these books and like doing these things, like it, I think, yeah, I think it could help in the long run on a, on a broader scale, but it starts with like individuals for sure. So yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to catch like wildfire quite yet. Cause a lot of people obviously were just about the black square last summer and then they were moved on. Yeah. Well, you know, if you want more people to get involved, you can't call it book club because you know, people, people, people don't like to read. <laughs> <laughs> audiobooks count dude audiobooks count as well um so do you guys have any like 
I don't know, like topics or agenda things or... Well, yeah, like the first book is How to Be Anti-Racist by Ibram Kendi. Okay. And we're going to do three meetings on that one because we're doing an intro call. And then we're going to do two more meetings to discuss our thoughts on the book. And we're going to be using like this thing called the circle way. So it's kind of like a rotating position where each time you we meet, the each person in the group plays like a different role so that they all have like a bit of accountability and responsibility to bring something to the table and not, you know, feel like left out or like they didn't get a say. And so it's not just like some person being like, this is what you should have gotten from this book. It's not like that. So, yeah. Is there a variety of races of people involved in it from the outset? Yeah. 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 They're um, quite diverse. I think it's one of those things where, yeah, you said it, you put it quite well that, people shouldn't be afraid of saying the wrong thing. It's just a matter of understanding when someone explains to them why that's wrong, that they then accept that or try to see it from that person's perspective. Like from the start of this conversation, when I was like, oh, your wife, and you went, oh, that's not the pronoun we choose to use. And I was like, right, understood. That's what you want. Then that's, you know, I have to be respectful of that. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, like that's, that's a really good point. Um, and because people are going to say the wrong thing. That's just human yeah. nature. Like you, if you don't, especially if you don't know, or you don't have experienced of it, like, you know, I'm white. What the hell do I know about being, being black or something? Like, I don't, Yeah. I, I couldn't it's, possibly it's, begin to understand. It's exactly that. It's like, I, I want more people to come out of this being able to, instead of calling people out, call them in. So it's like this thing that you said or did it, bothered me in this way or it hurt me in this way or this like this is the impact of the thing that you did I obviously know your intention wasn't that thing but here's why this impact is had so now moving forward we can hopefully not have that same thing happen but again like I hope that the book club and the community the conversations that we have will help more people to be able to call people in versus call them out because like yeah I feel like the call outs and like quotation marks heavily around cancel culture is like an idea that people feel really scared about. And they're like, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to be seen as one of those people. That's like an SJW, but like, <laughs> like SJW is pretty wild to me because social justice warrior seems like a thing that would be. A I was like, what is SJW for? Se- I'm awful with acronyms. So you can't just start throwing letters at me. I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it stands for social justice warrior, but like okay. Captain Planet is essentially a social justice warrior, but people didn't make fun of Captain Planet. I mean, well, I mean, maybe they did later as they're adults, but as children, they were like, oh, it's he's ripped me at a cool outfit. Don't, don't throw comic book references at me. That's, that's going to get me even more lost. Oh, man. You don't know Captain Planet? I, I know who he is, but I just, I'm not really into the whole Marvel DC all that oh, stuff yeah he's that's, not even in that he's not that i'm geeky like, enough i don't need to add more like i don't need more ammo for people oh you like comic books i'm gonna <laughs> kick your ass twice Dude, i've worn my glasses for this i got some in the car um yeah. but yeah it's like i don't understand how that has become a thing that would have a negative connotation because fighting for justice for like <laughs> social justice would be justice for all the people which is everybody not just some people but everyone so like how is this a negative i don't know but you know whatever it's the world we're in right now but then it it counteracts what you're working towards because if you say you want an open dialogue and you want people you know to have a meeting of minds and understand each other but at the same time people live in fear of cancel culture they're not going to open their mouth they're going to shut the fuck up and try and stay under the radar and the only people that are going to speak up against your views are people that are naturally confrontational and just want to stir shit so that's like it, it, it it's one of these ones where it's an incredibly fine balancing act yeah but, you know if if someone just happens yeah to have different political views that could be you know associated with you know racism or bigotry or whatever and then they're like well that's not i want to be entitled to support this political figure or whatever without being called that but everyone yeah. goes, well, tough, you don't get a choice. You are, and that's it. End of discussion. We're done with you. Then people people are going to see that and go, cool, that I actually support that political figure as well. I'm a, I consider myself a little bit open, more open-minded, but mm-hmm. now I'm just not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to, you know. So it's, yeah, it's a difficult one. 
F. But yeah, I think I think that's like the biggest part of the media club since as you said book club because it's not book exclusive like we're going to be watching podcast or listening to podcasts watching movies documentaries but like it's it's taking in the information and like digesting it thinking about it taking notes and being like oh okay i have questions about this this is weird. it's like that's where the the weird stigma that people might have kind of leaves, I think, because the more information they take in, the more they know moving forward so they can look at things from a slightly different perspective than they started with. And that's why, like, the more information that we take in through books and podcasts or whatever about these topics, the more easily we could talk about them, even if we disagree. Like, I'm sure there's going to be people in the book club that disagree with some of the things in the books or the what the podcast or whatever but like that's the thing it's like you have to i, <laughs> I have to i have to stop myself for a second because i was going to say like it's really important to listen and that's like a really big thing with calling people in versus calling them out it's like you have to listen to a lot of people's weird beliefs sometimes when they're like sort of hateful or dangerous beliefs but at a certain point I, I have to caution listening to that too much because like a lot of people are saying like they're being deplatformed and they're not being they're being censored or whatever but they're not at all because like it's easy to find them they're like there's plenty of places where their brand of words is welcome proudly but at the same time in this specific instance I think the more information that these people are taking in the better <laughs> suited they would be to have conversations about the topics even when they disagree with people on those topics strongly like they can fully disagree but like just taking in some of the information at least helps them to kind of see a little bit of where the person's coming from or where the people might be coming from yeah unless you have wildly different views for someone and then they happen to have a stack load of evidence that they've got that they're willing to back up their argument with and then it might become a frustrating brick wall where neither of you guys compromise and you're both like well we've both i've read up extensively on the topic as well and you're like yeah but i don't actually respect the authors that you've read up on so i don't i don't believe you have a valid argument and then they go well i don't happen to think that your authors are validated either so yeah, like hopefully we're not going to be dealing with too many QAnon people in the book club, but we'll see. Right. So what you're saying is I need to get Bo Coddington on as the next guest and then I can end up becoming a subject of, of the book club. That's what's going to happen. I get him on and I have a debate about America today and politics and right, cool. You gotta get Jordan Peterson on instead. That's the, the real one. He's a shitty guy. Never mind. <laughs> it's okay. Don't, cool. Now I need to Google them afterwards, right? Sweet. Um, that actually raises an interesting point. If, if, say, for example, someone like Josh or Bo was willing to read the material mm-hmm. and join the club and offer their insights into it, what would what would be your take on that? Well, I think it would depend on the um, intent that the person had when they were going into reading the material, because like. You could go into reading a book like How to Be Anti-Racist by Evelyn Kendi and be like, well, I am anti-racist already because I think racism is bad. But it's like, that's that's not that's not it. That's not the that's not the thing. So like going into the book with an open mind, like I'm planning to learn something from this, I'm planning to come out of this with something that I didn't know before is the place that we'd want to start from. So if you're going in with what I'm gonna guess is probably Bo's thoughts on books like this would be this is bullshit it's not a good starting point so i feel like we probably would take his his words with a grain of salt or you know maybe yeah i don't know figure out (laughs) another (laughs) book club for him (laughs) but he can't have it both ways he can't claim that he he regularly claims that he does the research and that he's looked at the figures and he's looked at it so you can't say he can't say that and then be like well i'm now providing you with learning material here that you have a choice to digest or not and then you can offer your thoughts and opinions on it if he goes well no i'm not going to read that and i'm like well then you're kind of showing a level of ignorance if you're not willing to engage in the dialogue so you can't call everyone a bunch of dum-dums and then not not back it up with you know practicing what you preach 
So, um, yeah, that would be an interesting one. All right, okay. So when are, are we? On? He's your next guest. Um, I don't have any immediate plans to no, no. Although I, I was kind of, sh- I hadn't watched Josh's Jump Street when it came out because. Mm. We just adopted a dog and things are a bit mental in our house right now because I've got a five-year-old daughter to look after and we're in lockdown and I'm working from home. So I kind of got to it a bit late. I only realized, well, I knew it was going to be controversial. As soon as I saw that it was his, I was like, well, of course they're going to get onto that subject. But I think I must have had about between 20 and 30 messages from people going, I really wish he'd come on platform. And I was like... And I was like, I don't understand what's happening here. And then when I saw it and saw how it played out, I was like, oh, I get it now. People just wanted me to call them out, right? Um, but yeah, so no, no immediate plans to get Bo on. I think, uh, yeah, I've never had any interaction with the guys, but I can't, yeah. There was a weird time where Angie Walton actually tried to put me in touch with him. He was in the UK and it was a few years ago because... Cool. I'd been in touch with An- Angie Walton when I started Wheel Scene and was just basically getting like tips from her and advice. And just because I was like, well, if I'm going to start something, I need to speak to someone that's done it before and someone who yeah. I like the way they've done it. And then randomly a few months later, she was like, oh, Bo's in the UK, he's in London. And I'm like, London's a long way from Glasgow. And she went, oh, well, he might <laughs> pop up. Like, she's like, oh, give him your details. And then it never panned out. So yeah, for all, I could have ended up spending time with Bo Coddington. And I will. I would have liked to see him in a transitional period between Trump existing as a political figure and Trump not existing. Like, was he an avid Bush fan? Like, right around 9-11 and shit? I'm sure he said that he voted for uh, Obama before. Okay. I'm, I'm sure he's, I'm sure I saw a thing where he was like, yeah, because he referred to it as drinking the Kool-Aid. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Cool. The Kool-Aid of voting for a president, which is still a ridiculous position and still does like all evil. So like, yeah, all manner of evil. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's tough Kool-Aid to drink, I guess. I mean, <laughs> no comment. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a difficult. It's, I, I think the thing is you're never going to vote you're never going to vote for someone that represents all your beliefs. That's physically impossible. Sure. And you're never going to vote there's never going to be a leader of a political party that is going to be without any, I don't know, negative ramifications. Like there, there, there's going to be policies they have that just don't line up with your morals or your beliefs. That's yeah. just, that's inevitable. It's just a matter of which ones you're willing to swap in and swap out yeah. or which ones you consider more important that you're willing to overlook the other ones. Right. And, um, so, yeah, it's it's a tough one to call. Yeah, yeah, man, this world, what a world it is. This country, the the Capitol building here is still like all fenced off and shit. Like a month later, so, I right, yeah, fear that like people are gonna trash it or what? Right? Okay. Yeah, there was like a big protest there. I think on the sixth as well, but it was just people just being outside with Trump flags and shit, sitting in chairs and getting weird and Trumpy there even though you would think they would be unhappy so you think they'd be unhappy about the wall or is new mexico different to mexico i don't know i don't i don't really understand how that works like i imagine maybe there's a portion like if if the border wall had been completed i imagine part of it would have had to go through somewhere around here but i don't know maybe i don't know (laughs) you think they'd object on that basis alone being like "Uh, wait a minute no that's not how it works those people don't think that far ahead they're, yeah. they're not really putting the blocks on top of each other as much as just pushing them into each other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a strange one. All right. Let's move away from politics and talk about how you're just trying to uh, sabotage your blading career by moving to the middle of nowhere when you lived in a rollerblading hub. Um, oh, when, when we last spoke, you were like, oh, yeah, I'm working in a new section. It's going to be in a video called 8 Down. So then 8 Down came out, and you yeah. had the, the True Spin Neg Misfit was it True Spin Neg Misfit? Yeah, I think so. Then the real you did it. You did it twice, didn't you? Back to back, or something? Yeah, like it was same spot, like same day. I was just trying to do it better. I don't I honestly. When I think about it now, I'm like, I don't like either of them. But you I, know, I don't know that real was steep and horrible. Like I would, I would not be 
Drew has been negative. That, that's no, that could have just gone. Oh, it was so steep, and and I'm pretty sure it had one of those like dick killers at the end as well. Mm-hmm. It, it, it did, didn't it? Yeah. Um, and was it filmed from like an apartment or something? Yeah, I think. Excuse me. I think Mike was up in my friend Garrett's apartment at the time, filming right. from like the window there. Yeah. So yeah. Down. That was that was a very cool angle where like the guy's on the phone and he's like, "You're not going to believe what Phil's just done." Yeah, that was that was very <laughs> cool. I like that. We'll need to show that clip. Um, and then you also had the section in "Hit It Wet," but you're clearly not going to have a section in "Hit It Wet" too because you're not there. Yeah, like I broke my arm in. I guess it was the end of February to 2020, and right. I broke my arm, dislocated my wrist, and how did that happen? I remember, uh, I remember you being off for a while, but I don't, I don't think I ever saw like how you did it. The, trying to get the last trick for that uh, rollerblade intro edit. Yeah, saw that. And yeah, like uh, I was doing back fast slide on this kink rail, and I was, <laughs> I made it through the kink, and I was on the down, and my wheel hit the rail, and I like went backwards, and like there's a like another two stair rail right behind it or right Mm -hmm. after it so i was like kind of worried about hitting that rail with my back so i reached backwards with my arm twisted like this and so hit the ground it was weird my hand was dangling i kind of thought like i just dislocated my wrist because it was pushed out pretty far and it didn't hurt that bad at the time but yeah that was ice so that happened and then three months there there isn't footage of that is there yeah there is (laughs) But was it's not it? on the internet. <laughs> right. Because I was I was like, I, I think I would remember seeing something quite so absolutely grim. Right. Okay. Yeah. Was yeah. it Taylor that filmed that? I can't remember. Was it Taylor? Yeah, that it was Taylor. Yeah. He didn't decide to just be a little bit graphic and put it in at the end just to shock people, no? I think I posted a picture of it on like Taylor's birthday because he was like filming it fisheye and he like had this crazy look on his face because ESG took a photo. So um, you can just see my hand like this, like about to touch the ground. And Taylor's just like, oh, reaching the camera out. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. So uh, yeah, like that happened. And then there was, I guess, three months of rehabilitation time for that healing and whatever casts and shit. And then the COVID thing happened right around the beginning of that. And so I started filming maybe four months later, I guess, for the little peace out to Oakland thing. Cause I didn't really know it was going to be peace out to Oakland, but then, yeah, like, I don't know. There was like a bunch of fires there and shit and like, there was something else happening. And then like, yeah, either way, it was just like, all right, well, I guess I'm probably going to leave. So I got to try to hustle up and get stuff done filmed. And so didn't really have too much time to try to film with Taylor and those dudes. And so, yeah didn't didn't get any any footage with three headed wet too looks like we're gonna have a good one though they've been filming for a while was that around the time brian freeman moved because he moved out of the bay area as well didn't he where did he he's moved near sac i forgot what it's called but it's some city like near sacramento yeah it looks like he's moved out to the sticks yeah it's pretty rural Yeah. yeah um so it's just you two guys that left. I was kind of worried that it was like the band breaking up and everyone was just like, oh, I'm going my separate ways. Cause I know that Victor Arias is like, move, he's living. He lives in Oakdale. It's like, it's like an hour away or some shit from Oakland, but it's, it's pretty far out there too. But it's, I don't know. I mean, B3 still comes down there. He still skates with those dudes every once in a while. Um, there's like, I don't know if you've seen the Derbs Ranch, the dude in Sacramento. That's what I was going to ask. Who's whose ramp set up is that? Mike Derbs. He's a uh, homie from I don't know where he's from originally, but he lives in Sacramento or the Sacramento area now. Okay. And uh, yeah, he's got that. Just finished building it, like I guess the end of the last summer. And yeah, it looks fucking sick. I can't wait to go skate it. It looks like an expensive setup. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I've seen council parks that look worse than that place so yeah yeah for sure um yeah so the oh, who was it 
That's his Jake Dotson. Jake Dotson. And then I saw he was with some of the San Francisco guys in the role. And then I saw, I saw a clip of Biz falling like up one of the transitions. And it yeah. just reminded me of like Brooke Howard Smith in one of the Senate videos where he just crashes into the ramp. And, and I'm like, who, <laughs> who falls into a ramp? Like you normally fall like, coming down it. You don't fall going into it. Yeah. So that's right. Um, all right. Okay. Yeah, miss yeah. those dudes. Shout out to JSF. JSF forever. Um, yeah. Do you have Fisher any? Tape. Do you have any footage from that's unreleased yet from that period, or um, is it all? Is it, it all out there? With the dude Rich Diaz that filmed my like farewell edit. Right. Um, he's got some footage that'll be in a video he's maybe making. <laughs> it might come out. It may come out. I hate it when people do yeah. shit like that. They're like, I'm just I'm just stacking stuff. And you're like, yeah, but what's it for? And yeah, like, like well, we, we joked about it. And he was like, yeah, it was going to be called like expired or some shit like that. Because it'll all be like fucking super old footage. Like probably started in like 2018, I think, 2019. So it's going to be, maybe it'll come out. We'll see. It's not a whole bunch, but I got some stuff with him. And I'm working on some stuff with the dude Jeremy Curtis that lives in Angel Fire, your favorite city. My new favorite uh-huh. city. You're damn right. Yeah. And I'm looking that up in Google Peter. Maps, it's going to be very disappointing when I look at it and be like, oh, it's just a shitty normal town. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty small. It's a very small town. Like one of those towns that might not have a gas station size shit. Like real town. It'll have a church, a church in Angel Fire. That's that's what you want. <laughs> Probably where they worship the angel of fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, so we are saying is by the time this Rich Diaz footage comes out, Rollerblade might not even make the skate that you were you were riding that footage. Probably they they already don't for sure. They already don't make the skate <laughs> for sure. They definitely stopped making it. There's no more new jacks being produced by Rollerblade. New skate coming at some point this year. So. But say Sean Keen and all those guys will be hyped on that because they all hate the new Jack. They all wanted the the solo. Yeah, like I, I've been skating a solo with like one of the little prototype soles on it, and I'm waiting on some of the frames. Um, but yeah, like I, I like the solo a thousand times better than I like the new Jack. The new Jack was not my favorite, but it's a, it, it's a very sluggish skate. It moves. Yeah, it's very slow. Yeah, it it there was a lot to it and so little at the same time. It's it's weird. Like I don't know if you ever looked at it. Like I've I've got up here in my garage. My friend gave because I've got a really wide foot, so I always have to yeah. wear like massive skates. And I'm like, I just want a skate that's smaller but white. And he was like, oh, yeah. and he only wears like RBs. And as mm. soon as I put them on and like just rolled down a path, I could feel you know when you feel like the wheels like like kind of like <laughs> juddering or something. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I took out the the footbed and realized it's got this massive heel on the foot and i'm like i'm wearing high heel skates what the <laughs> hell is that crap and i put in a different and i was like that's only made it marginally better i was like why i want i don't want i don't want to be rolling around slow yeah it's so. like a thick, it's a thick soul situation like it, there's definitely like for me it feels like a separation between your foot the bottom of your foot and the soul where it's like there's a the definite disconnect yeah yeah um Funnily enough, I'd, I saw the soul plates in person when Sven Bokhurst was in, he was in Scotland mm. before Winter Clash last year and he was filming yeah. with uh, Chaz Sands and I saw the skates and he was just, Cavan, Cavan was there with him filming. So it was nice to obviously catch up with Cavan. He was like, oh yeah, I know what you're like. He's like, don't tell anyone about the soul plates. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm like you do realize as soon as you release this footage, that's the first thing everyone's going to look at and they're going to, zo- and then what literally... As soon as Kevin released that edit, people were screenshotting any kind of close up of the skate and being like, look at the, because people have got like eagle eyes. Everyone notices, yeah. you've got all the tech geeks that just notice stuff like that straight away. And then by the time Winter Clash rolled around, it was out. Everyone knew and saw it. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's not a well kept secret. <laughs> no, not really. They're, the souls have been working really good for me. I've been skating them for like, I guess, four or five months or something like that now. And yeah, like I'm enjoying them a lot. Uh, yeah, hopefully, I think I, the new skate's gonna have like a lot of new other shit, new, new cuff, new frame, new liner and buckles and all that shit. So, so it's not just be, a solo boot, or is it a solo boot that's been upgraded? It's, or what? it's, a, it's, it's new. Right. I'm gonna say that it's new, but just and a similar silhouette or what? Or similar, yes. it looks the same. I, I thought it just looked like a solo with different 
so like just parts had been changed on it. You'll see. You'll oh, see. God, such a tease. I hate tea, right? <laughs> hey, it's a tease for me too. I want those skates. I'm like, damn, I'm skating these. Like, well, my, right, you're I'm, not. You've you've not you've got, you've got, got them. Started. You've just they're just sending you parts to try it or what? Yeah, like I just got the li- the frames to try. I mean, not the frames, the soles to try, and I got like I got those a few months back. And I was talking to him today in email to get some of the new frames, which I guess are like a good frame for flat. So we'll see how those work. I also have some other frames to try out from Kareem, those Master Blade frames. I'm kind of excited to try those. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, like the RB ones should be here soon. And then, yeah, new other stuff later this year, maybe. Mm-hmm. All right, I hear you. It it seems like they've kind of tried to launch Blank a few times because I remember they tried to make Blank a separate brand back when Sizemore was on it and he was like taking all the product shots and everything. They were like, oh, and it seemed like they were going to go full steam ahead with it then. And then Sizemore quit and eventually joined Valo. And I was like, and then the idea just seemed dead in the water and now they're bringing it back again. And I'm like, have we have we gone back in time? Like, what? Okay. <laughs> no, I think it's just kind of like, um, I think it's like Tom's pet, like, project you kind of vibes like he's kind of trying to lead that and head that situation so yeah um i think yeah i think people will be pleased once the stuff comes out for sure because it looks looks pretty good so yeah i think i think people will be hyped i think there'll be a few more people skating with rbs at parks than they are look now. intriguing yeah the ones i've seen on Sven, the main thing that put me off solos in the past was the massive soul plate that just reminded me of those Salomon wide bodies. And I hated yeah, the way so I thought they just looked like Fisher Price skates. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not putting those in my feet. But it, it, it's a lot more aesthetically pleasing than you, the new design yeah. that I've got. I think they had to do like, I think Tom got like kind of stuck between like wanting to do an aggressive skate and RB wanting him to do like a more universally acceptable skate like rec skate kind of thing so that's yeah. why the solo ended up kind of like that but yeah because it kind of does have that like if you take these off it's just a regular skate i guess maybe i don't know so yeah it's the shift before the shift the pre-shift i hear you so when's the pl- when are they planning on bringing that out uh i think it's later this year pretty sure it's later this year right Hopefully more people will have a vaccine at that time and then maybe I get to go on a tour of some sort. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, because I saw they were putting the advert on Jump Street, so they've obviously got something planned for relatively soon. Otherwise, it would be a bit premature to start, you know, <laughs> the promo brigade now. Yeah, all right, yeah. okay. Um, are you are you still riding for Securethane as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been talking to Kevin a good bit here recently. He lives, like, I think like seven hours away from here in Texas, San Angelo. Oh yeah, that's real close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like pretty close. What? I mean, I don't know. Like, I love how like, Americans are like, he's only seven hours away. I'm like, I could literally drive the length and breadth of my country <laughs> twice. <laughs> <laughs> when I lived in Alabama, I used to drive like 10, 12 hours and like not even think about it at all. Just be like, all right, well, I'm going there because there's people skating. So let's go. So I don't know, but. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's like mostly straight lines. And like Texas, they have super high speed limits. You can drive like 75 miles. It's mostly straight lines, so it's easier to fall asleep at the wheel. Great. (laughs) I guess. (laughs) Drink some coffee while you How did Philip die? He just veered off the road clean into a lamppost. He'd been driving for seven hours both ways. (laughs) I thought about like last year, my dad talked me out of it, but I thought about driving to Salt Lake City for uh, like a... Um, like a DIY contest that the dude from Transit was throwing. But um, Kirill, yeah, like, uh, but I ended up not doing it, but it was like, it's like 10 and a half hours. So that would have been a real long slog. That wouldn't have been fun. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. So, yeah, so as you said, you've been talking to Kevin. What does that mean? Is there anything in the works or? Um, yeah, like we're working on some stuff. I mean, he's, he's busy and, I've been kind of busy. And I love how you've suddenly <laughs> gone high pitched. You've went from the smooth, the smooth dulcet tones to high pitched, which means you're keeping something from me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't like to spread rumors, you know. But like, who knows? I mean, maybe something cool will happen. I don't know. I can't. You know, I don't want. I don't like to speculate. You know. 
it's dangerous stuff. <laughs> right. There'll be no fun. But yeah, right like there. Kevin's, okay. Kevin's cool. He's been working on some stuff. I've been working on some stuff. We might have some things together, maybe. Maybe do some things, cool things, possibly. I mean, not if you live in the middle of nowhere and then you're planning on eloping to, you know, Australia. It'd be like, you just. Oh, yeah, away. like that. Dude, that would be a real bug out for sure. Because, like, I, every time I see Australia, like, I follow some people from Australia on Instagram and shit. And I've, I guess a couple friends there, but, like, um, they're fucking not in lockdown, no masks, just partying it up. And I'm like, fuck, I wish we had moved there. That's oh, they're also handling it a lot more sensibly. Anytime like one person gets it, it appears on the news and they say where they've been and what they've done for like the past two, three days, you're like, cool. Um yeah. Yeah, they're definitely handling it a lot better than many other countries. New Zealand do it as well. They put up like news bulletins and say, This is where the person's been, this is what they've done. Da, da, da. And you're like, Well, it's, it's easy to track and trace then. It's it's all over yeah. national news. Um yeah. So when would when would you how long are you guys planning on staying in where you are just now in New Mexico? Uh, probably like at least for a year. Like we got a lease on a house. Oh, right. Here. So it's not right. So it's not like imminent. Okay. Yeah. The, the way you made it sound time. was you were like, we're here for a few months. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Like the program for Oliver is 20 or not 20, six months. So um, he's, I think, four months in now. So like maybe two more months. He's doing fucking aces. He's, really smart and he's very cute and he wears cool clothes and so as far as upper, I, I thought i would never be a person with the clothes the dog wearing clothing but he gets cold and shivery no and one so does no one does for, they think they'll be that person yeah it's for utility but like it has to look cool also so like you know. okay okay yeah we ended up giving a Staffordshire Bull Terrier a tweed jacket and it's it's weird having a tough guy dog that, that thinks he's a little badass and then, then you put a little cute collared jacket on him and he suddenly feels like a, a total dick. <laughs> he's like, I try and be mean and aggressive, but mommy made me dress like a nerd. So I guess I'm just going to have to fulfill this prophecy. Um, he's probably a professor, a dog professor. He's, he's got the grumpy old man face. So yeah, that's, that's probably right. Um, that seems like a lot of effort to go to just to have your dog on the plane with you. I'm still. I'm, I'm well, it's not just for the plane. It's more for like when, if we were to go like anywhere, like if we went to Europe, uh, well, COVID prohibited, COVID limit, uh, COVID willing. Yeah. Um, if we were to just go to Europe for travel, we wanted to be there for like a month. We could just take him with us after this. Like he can just go and be wherever we are and then come back and be on the plane with us and be fine. And as opposed to like, if we were to go there and take him with us, he'd have to be staying in a like kennel that we'd have to pay for to be quarantined and then tested for all the stuff to make sure he was safe to be in the country and all that shit. And so like, yeah. that's just more cost. So it's like, if we just do this once, then he's good to go for the rest of his life. So they don't ever have to be tested if they went through this? Program. Well, okay. So like after going through this, right before you leave the country, you have to get like a certain number of shots. Right preemptively but the majority of the paperwork is done once he's got the certification that he's a service dog so it's like the shots are like based on when we're leaving but the he's once he's finished with the certification he's pretty much good to go okay we spent a lot of time in this podcast talking about a dog <laughs> people, like, people are gonna watch this and be like what oliver evie <laughs> I came to listen to some rollerblade and they've just been talking about some pet that I don't know about for <laughs> ages. What the hell is that? If, if you want to know, you're going to have to go on Phil's Instagram. Um, yeah, I've seen him. He's, li- he's little and fluffy. He's in the wedding photos. Look for the wedding photos. You'll see him. Very cute. Um, right, okay. So mm-hmm. so no no immediate plans for the future then. You guys are going to be there for a while. So what what else can yeah. we look forward to? What else, apart from your, your, random, your random edit with Mr. Angel Fire? Yeah, uh, working on stuff with Angel Fire, working on some stuff for Casper. Um, I saw that. I have, yeah, I've been talking to Jan Welch about the project that he's working on, so hopefully filming some stuff with him at some point later in the year, maybe. I don't know. Right. Um, is this is this the video he's been working on for what appears to be the better half of a decade? <laughs> I'm sure I saw him at Winter Clash like four years ago, and he was he was filming for it then. I'm like, dude, is this is this what is this like Apocalypse Now? Is this one of these things, these projects that's going to break you? 
<laughs> the never ending project. Uh, it's a citizen Kane, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Like maybe, I guess. Um, so there's that. Um, uh, pretty sure I'm working on some stuff that is going to go to rollerblade for some of their deals. And I'm trying to think, yeah, mainly I would just say the book club. That's the main thing I've been working on is like trying to get that going and uh, getting a lot of help from all the homies and working on some stuff for another group of people in on the continent of Africa that are out there trying to get a community and scene going. So working on some projects to get them into control of some sort of funding so they can create what they want in their area. And uh, let's see. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else I'm missing. The thing with Ian, for sure, whenever I can skate with Ian again, that'd be sick. Um, yeah, no, that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah. Apart Hopefully, from, yes, you put us up here. Yeah, that and that and being a full time. What's the acronym you've you've taught me today? And a full time SJW is that? Is that, oh, yeah. that, that was happening as well. Right, cool. <laughs> I forgot to ask you about the Casper thing. When did all that come about? Um, yeah, like I I started talking to Jeremy maybe last summer sometime, and it was I think around because he was doing some fundraising for Black Lives Matter and selling those protest packs and yeah i think i started talking to him around that and then he was working with charles initially for the skate thing and i i've known charles for i've known charles for a long time and like me and charles talked about that a little bit i was like well i'm gonna do the thing i'm doing with rollerblade and they've got like the homies on the team i'm trying to like you know skate with my homies for a bit and um so yeah, like I guess we started talking around that initially, around the protest things, and then sort of the skate. But like I wasn't really down with being on the skate team because I was pretty set with rollerblade at the time. But yeah, anyways, so just kind of started talking to Jeremy, and he's a cool dude, and so we just chatted up, and then like Maddie's on the team, and Maddie's one of my friends from a really long time ago, and so I don't know. I think Matty Shrock. Yeah, Matty Shrock yeah. Um, and Brian Weiss. And there's somebody else that's not announced yet, I think. That's a homie. Um, and so, yeah, it's, yeah, it just felt like it'd be a cool thing. And like, I know Casper's like kind of a legendary thing in skating, like from the face to music era of skating. And so, yeah, I was like, obviously pretty honored to be like yeah i'll you want me to be on your thing sure sure yeah that sounds cool okay <laughs> and plus he was down with the book club and like trying to help get that started and like some of the other projects and so yeah um like-minded sort of people and yeah works you, you, you know that jeremy Baitel also used to work with josh petty right yeah that they don't uh, we'll we'll get into that i i can't i can't say there's a thing but i can't say it's there's a thing with that that's happening so you know keep your eyes out for that keep your eyes peeled for the josh petty jeremy bates hall reissue um because no, for a while yeah. josh petty started wanted to start a clothing company and bites hall <clears throat> designed the t-shirts and then he said he was going to donate all the money to the church and then loads of people were like no nah, we're not into that we're not into this whole <laughs> thing and then the idea just seemed to disappear but that was a few years ago now yeah yeah the i oof, ah, oof, ah, oof, yeah there's i don't want like i don't know if it's if it's like telling someone else's story but jeremy had a story about how i don't know you know josh petty's uh logo for his truck com- or motorcycle heard there's some um controversy guess- around it because apparently some of the image resembles like well, it doesn't um, resemble. It's just like straight like, up, like copy it paste. It has but an iron. What is it? Has an iron it. cross or something on it, or something like that? Yeah, it's an iron cross with a little fucking uh, scope sight shit on. It. It's a bunch of bull. Anyways, so um, Jeremy offered to redesign it for free, right? And um, Petty seemed into it, and then he was like, "All right, so what you would pay me, I want you to just donate to like Black Lives Matter or some similar cause." And Josh Petty just stopped talking to him. 
Yeah, he. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm pretty sure he just considers that a writing group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Also, oh, <laughs> that's a writing group, not those people at the Capitol. Those are writers. That, yeah, that's. That, it, it's an interesting. The, the contradiction there is quite baffling where people are like, yeah, you can't burn down buildings, but we'll just walk clean into, you know, a government building and just cause an absolute ruckus. Yeah, the, the hypocrisy in that is almost, walls. yeah, it's unbelievable. I was under the impression that Robert Lee Ivanos designed that motorcycle garage logo. In fact, I'm pretty sure Josh Petty has said in the past <laughs> that Robert Lee Ivanos designed it for him. That's why I'm so, but like, hey. Because I'm can, sure that's his argument for why it wasn't offensive because, because you know, it's like the Camilla Harris argument. It's like, well, I, I employed a person with brown skin to do it, so it can't, it can't possibly be offensive. I'm sure, in a, I'm, I'm sure in a podcast, yeah, he said it was Robert Leavanos that did it. Trippy. I don't know, man. That's bad job on Robert Leavanos' part, but I mean, I don't... I don't know. I feel like it'd be hard to claim ignorance on that sort of stuff because it's like that icon, icon, ah, icon, uh, blah, blah, blah. Sim, symbolism and sim. What's the word? Symbol, symbology. I don't know. I, icon, iconography. I don't know. Whatever the shit. Yeah. That sort of thing. Like it's it's very clear. Like what it is and like kind of the direct poles. So it's like all right, this logo right back to the back of a Panzer tank in World War Two. Wow, that's weird. But like, uh, I don't know. So. Yeah, it seems like an obvious oversight, but it's possible that someone could make that oversight, I guess. And so, yeah, either way, it's like, it's not about, and again, that's that's one of those intent over impact situations. So it's like, he says that's not the intent that he had, but the impact was still that this thing to people behind you when you're driving in your car, is going to look like, oh, that looks like Nazi symbolism. This is weird. Yeah, so true. I feel uncomfortable now, whereas I didn't before. And he's been told that, and instead of just being like, okay, I can come up with something that's not Nazi symbolism, and I'll use that instead, so that I don't offend people, but instead he was just like, I'm 30% Jewish, I think? Uh, There was a whole lot of sentences that transpired during that period that really kind of didn't sit well with me. The part where he said, I have friends who are black, so I can't be yeah, racist. I was like, that's not an argument. That's not, you <laughs> know. Yeah. I, I've watched just to make watched- it, I don't, I don't believe Josh is racist. I do believe he has ignorant views, but I, I don't believe, I don't believe it goes as far as that. But I do, I do think saying things like I have black friends or I have sponsored black people or I listen to music by black people I, none of those things none of those things are helpful arguments and if anything it just makes the situation worse because when people start saying things like that it sounds like desperate clutches uh thin air so i think the black dude uh made or like uh, invented stoplights so like he could have been like i drive a car and on the roads with stoplights so i can't be racist because a black dude made that that's yeah. that's the same logic the one thing that did, I don't know why I keep coming back to this. The one thing that did baffle me is though, if he does say that again, you can't have it both ways because you can't say that you don't believe racism and white supremacy is a problem in America. And then say, I have black friends because one of his black friends is Richard Johnson. And last year, Richard Johnson was campaigning with his daughter for black lives matter. Yeah. Now, if racism wasn't a problem in America, his black friend would not be campaigning for equal rights for black people. So it's like, you can't say that it's not a problem when you haven't seen it. If you know for a fact that your friend is out there on the streets with his young daughter for that very reason. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah. Wow. The, it contradictions just, are the, the, more, the more you've spoke, the more it's just ignited other thoughts in my head about it. That makes it even more. Yeah. Just ridiculous, but okay. Oh, man. Yeah, like, I, I hope that this is just another similar moment as last year was for a lot of people to just be an eye-opening thing where it's like, all right, hold on, I'm going to try a little bit harder, I am actually going to read that book, or I will listen to that podcast, even if they're not a part of the club, just, yeah, like, I, I hope that the Josh Petty thing just opened a few more eyes 
in that way because it seems like a lot more people were concerned and spoke out about it and that's 100 positive i see no negative impact there really i mean aside from people just kind of shitting on josh petty and being like fuck this guy forever i mean like fuck yeah. him for the stuff he said on that show but like i don't want that dude to die and shit like i'm not like <laughs> i don't think i don't think he's like pure evil or anything but i do think he has or holds some beliefs that are unsafe and you know dangerous to lots of people like me and around me but either way he hopefully will learn from at least from that podcast because like i know a lot of people reached out to him and he responded to a couple of them he responded to esg i saw that in the jsf text he responded well no i guess he didn't he just because he kind of was going back and forth with the I was about say, from, did they have a cam interaction or was it them just kicking off at each other because you know if if they could actually talk about it like rational adults then that's great but if it's just them yeah. you know taking shots at like, each other that's not particularly helpful like esg was definitely calm and i mean it was like a dm or something on instagram so it's not like a phone conversation so i mean i hope that i, mean, I don't know it looked like it was typed calmly by esg it looked like his was calmly typed but it had a lot of the same sort of defenses of like, I didn't mean this when I said this, I didn't mean this when I said this, what I meant was this. And it's like, well, that's weird. Cause like, it's always odd to me when people are like, I said this one thing, but I actually meant this other thing that's completely different than that thing. So like when I said that I don't like people from San Francisco, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about like other people from San Francisco that like aren't you, but like, like, but ESG doesn't live in San Francisco, but Cam does, or like whatever. Lots of the the homies live in San Francisco, or whatever. So you're not, he's not shitting on some specific people because the person he was talking about, he's mad about a, a person named Noah, who's my friend. That one of the one of the people that got me my first job when I moved to the Bay. Yeah, because um, I saw they've been exchanging like yeah. you know tete a tete on Instagram a few times because he's doesn't yeah. he he's got he's got a weird handle like this it's not something about Jew life i think Jew, yeah that's the one Jew hand, yeah. 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 and he's a what jewish role player, so like i'm not gonna tell him what not to have his instagram name be but yeah. like yeah um josh petty was like back and forth like threatening him and shit and that's like so he was talking to noah who doesn't live in san francisco but he called out all of san francisco and said everybody there is vegan soy boys or whatever the fuck and it's just like in his comments to ESG, he was like, I wasn't saying that. I wasn't really saying that. That's not what I would, but it's like, well, that's what you fucking said, man. Like it's, it's on tape. We can, we can go to the video right now. True. But when people with limited, let's say vocabulary or, you know, <laughs> like ways to express themselves, get angry. The first thing that comes out of their mouth isn't necessarily their true feelings. It's just the, you know, they can't, they, they don't, <laughs> they don't know how to like focus a certain idea in a succinct way so instead they just end up saying something that's maybe a lot more generalized so yeah i think as as opposed to josh just being on a podcast and going fuck this guy he decided mm -hmm. to try and say something clever that just ended up not being very clever yeah. at all it's like let me just burn this bridge real quick to these people that are super cool because like the bay is probably one of the most like sick scenes that i've ever experienced in all of America's rollerblading scenes that I've that I have seen and been a part of or whatever or skated with. So yeah, it's it was pretty weird seeing like kind of call those dudes out because it's like, well, not these dudes. Like they're not gonna A take this well and then B like it's, they're it's not like, the Yeah, it's a really good way of uniting people against you. Like like if yeah. see see if you do just have to go after one person, at least the rest of them can go, well I still respect the guy. He just doesn't like you. But then yeah. when you, but then when you just attack an entire city, it's like, oh that's that's really just that's igniting the mob mentality and not in your favor. Yeah. Yeah. That's a strange one. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, but it just, yeah, it looks like it's the starting of a learning situation. So if you guys want to join the book club, hit me up on my Instagram or my, or the Facebook group, which is aware underscore wheels and feels, I think is the name of that. And yeah. Um, that's what I was going to ask. Are people going to be able to? Are people going to be able to like see the discussions that take place? Like, are are the calls going to be recorded and then yeah, I don't know, like you know, like streamed or whatever? Or like, because I think it'd be quite. I imagine there'd be people out there that'd be interested to see the discussions that take place as a result of you know the reading materials or the podcasts or the you know yeah. the topics that come up. I think yeah, probably we will be recording them and likely. Um, yeah, likely we'll have some of them posted and available for people to check out, but 
Yeah, right now, um, I think right now the plan was to kind of have the kind of discussion, public face of the discussion be the podcast once that gets going after the first book is done. Because like it, w- it might involve some of the people from the book club being guests on the show and then like having further discussions around one of the topics from the book or a chosen topic for the discussion on the podcast that day, which connects back to the book. So, yeah. Right. Okay. It's Yeah. But definitely the discussions will be available for people to check out because we do want more of that. Yeah. That could be quite cool. All right. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of things in the works. And even if you're, you know, skiving off a bit in the blade in front, it sounds like you're uh, still, good, skating. Good, you know, still, still, still skating, skating on my own with my, my, with my one friend. With my one friend from Angel Fire. <laughs> Shout out to Jeremy Curtis. He's the homie. Jeremy Curtis. I'm never going to be able to call him that. It's just going to be. It's going to be Angel Fire from now on. That's a good nickname to have as well. That's a solid nickname. Imagine you had that nickname in school. That'd be sick. <laughs> right. I think that's that's a positive note to leave on. Let's leave it. Let's leave it on that note. People with awesome names. Uh, yeah. Thanks for taking the time to do it. And can't wait to see the new footage that comes out. Please don't disappear to Australia too quickly because. I would, would at least like to squeeze another couple of sections out you first. You can film more footage when you get out there, but you know, give us um, give us something. Yeah. Definitely I promise to have at least three edits this year. So yeah, one of them might be a VOD, it'll be real cheap. But yeah. Because I don't want to take your money and I know it's a fucking pandemic and shit. So yeah, but I definitely am gonna have some footage for you guys this year. For everyone this year. On rollerblade skates, oh, not on Charles Dunkel skates. Say not non rollerblade skates. Shout out to rollerblade and blank rolling products. I hear you. Right. Enjoy the rest of your date now that you've had an absolute lazy one and only had breakfast at 1 30 in the afternoon. Um you're gonna have to have dinner at like nine o'clock at night, like a Spanish person, right? Cool. <laughs> a few five uh, five minute naps before that. Yeah, you can have siesta time first. Epic. You know, you can just live your best life today. It's pretty good. I don't have to work today. I think I have to go up to the mountain tomorrow. So, yeah, to be chilling today. All right, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. And as always, an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Dude, thank you. You as well. Much appreciated. We can do this again in another year and one month. Sounds like a plan. Hopefully I'll have some more cool stuff in the works at that point. <laughs> like That can be our anniversary. That can be Phil and Dave's anniversary. Right, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaks in. You.